It's time for the Super Bowl. So me and Jimmy's going to go ahead and preview the three things these teams need to do to win. All that coming up here in Unos Momentos. Trace. Everybody, it's your boy Jay here with Unfair Sports, where we take a pensive approach to the sports conversation. With my co-host Jimmy, we're going to be talking about the three things the Rams and Bengals need to do to win this Super Bowl. Stick around; you're going to want to hear this. About the top mm-hmm. threes of both teams that they will need to do to win this Super Bowl. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Rams yeah. first. You want me to start? Yeah, you go one. Yeah. All right, Rams. Number one thing. They need to do in order to win this Super Bowl. Get Joe Burrow, Aaron Donald, Von Miller. Find a way to just keep the pressure going. If you get pressure with four nonstop, game's over. Flip, flip, flip. <laughs> Game over. It's done. It's done. Deal. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, I would say my first thing is, and that's that's a really interesting one. That's a good one. Um, is exploit the Bengals' run defense. When I looked at traditional team stats, a few basic stats for each team, they're very, very similar when it comes to offense, but the difference happens when it comes to defense. When it comes to defense, one team, the Rams allow 286 yards a game. The Bengals, 395, so almost 400. Versus the run, the Rams average 54, giving up 54 yards a game, whereas the Bengals, 127. So what does that tell me? That tells me to exploit the Bengals' run defense. And I think first and foremost with Sony Michelle, who, because Cam Akers is coming back from injury, and you saw those fumbles that he had against Tampa, almost fumbled the back, should have lost that game. I would trust Sony Michelle, who has actually, the last time the Rams were in the Super Bowl, he was a Patriot, right? Yep. So he's irrespective. He's been in this game before. So you pound him, uh, Cam but Akers, if Daryl Henderson. Rams, if, yeah. If Daryl, exactly, <laughs> ironically, if Derek, <laughs> I'm sorry, if Daryl Anderson Jr. is available to play, you run him some as well. I mean, there are other reasons why you want to pound the rock, but pound the rock and exploit this Bengals run defense. That's number one. Okay. What's the so, so? What's the second thing? The second thing the Rams must do as a key the to victory. The second thing the Rams must do is keep Cooper Cup open. You don't want Matthew Stafford throwing the ball to everybody. You want him to get cup more often to keep the defense busy so other players can get open. But Cooper Cup, honestly, he's he he might be the MVP this year because he was just doing ridiculous things to get wide open. He's their best weapon. Love OBJ. I think OBJ is ridiculously good. He is mm-hmm. maybe their number three receiver if if uh, if Woods was was healthy. So because of that, focus on Cooper Cup. Find a way to make sure that he is somewhere in open space to at least make catches. I mm. think that will keep Stafford calm and he won't throw away the game. Get it to Cooper Cup. Uh, yes, I definitely agree with that. My second one, actually, it, it's a, it's kind of a part of what you're talking about. And mine is this. And what I'm going to say this is going to sound counterintuitive to what I just said as far as pounding the rock. But I think the second thing is to, for Sean McVay, to not call a pass game to save Matthew Stafford from himself. You know, don't <laughs> call plays to where to where Matthew Stafford knows that he doesn't trust him in the biggest spot. Because like it or not, and I know, you know, Matthew Stafford, he has had passes in this playoffs where he is trying to sell the bag. But the truth is, without his arm, they wouldn't be in this spot. He has six touchdowns and one interception in these playoffs. Would he want to have some throws back? Could he have done better? Does he look like Detroit Matthew Stafford in spots? Yes, but I think you want him completely confident and to feel completely trusted in this spot because if you don't, he's going to get in his head too much. He's going to think too much, and that's what's going to help to create some of those turnovers that you don't want. So I think that McVay, you know, call a confident passing game. You don't have to go crazy because this is the Super Bowl and have him throwing 70-yard bombs every other play, but call a passing game to where he's comfortable with it, to where he's confident, but to where he can do what you brought him in for, which is to give you that extra spark through the air that Jared Goff could not give you. I mean, you're right. I I give more credit to Cooper Cup for those uh, plays that saved them in the playoffs, but, you know, I get get what you're saying. So my third thing is, is, uh, which which is, you know, pretty funny, it's complete opposite of you, is don't trust Matt Stafford to win this game. (laughs) Don't. I have, I, 
I like Matt Stafford as a talent. I've said it for years. I think he is a talented arm. I think that he is a capable quarterback. He makes the wrong decisions. And Cincinnati has shown us against Kansas City, they know how to make the right adjustments to screw up your quarterback. And I promise you, they have been thinking about ways to get in Stafford's head the last two weeks. And if that's the case, Mm -hmm. if you try to trust him in this game, he's going to make some mistakes. And don't make the dumb mistake of letting Eli Apple get an interception in this game. Dog, Twitter's <laughs> going to blow up. They may have to shut down the dang website if he makes a play. So, And Stafford has done a good job of finding ways to try to give games back. So don't trust Stafford to do his own. McVay needs to be the quarterback, and we've learned it. We've learned it in these playoffs. Mm-hmm. I hate it, but he needs to be the quarterback and just let Stafford have the arm strength that Jared Goff did not have. Uh-huh. That's my third thing. You want to know what your problem is, Jay? Oh, oh Lord. <laughs> Here's oh, your Lord. problem. The problem is my problem. My once you problem. My problem. Yeah, your problem. Once you stop trusting a player, you never trust them again, no matter what they do. You're right. You're right. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Which I mean, and there's nothing there to that. The problem is, and, and with that, it's not it's not that. It's we had 13 years of data. Mm-hmm. That's it. I would not say this about. Joe Burrow right now, honestly, I wouldn't say it about Tua. I wouldn't say it about the younger quarterbacks because we don't have enough. I would say it about Russell Wilson. I would say it about staff. When you have data, perfect example, Tom Brady. I don't bet against him. Why? Because I got 17 years of data telling me, don't be stupid. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you see, but that, that but with Matthew Stafford, though, that's 12 years of corrupted data because mm-hmm. he was in Detroit where careers have gone, great careers have gone to die. Now, I know what you're going to say. You're going to say that you've seen some of those Detroit Stafford tendencies throughout the Rams season. And yes, that is there. And yes, the majority of the time when you no longer refuse to trust the player, you are right. But I think that in certain circumstances, in certain spots, especially new spots, I would like to see you open yourself up more to trusting a player or two because they might actually have gotten over what caused you to distrust them. You know, he had Megatron in his prime, right? And they made the playoffs twice and Stafford couldn't make it happen in those playoff games. So that's all Matthew Stafford's fault? Go look at the numbers. Go ahead. What's the the number? (laughs) He's got his piece of the pie. He's got his piece of the pie. I'm just saying that that's not all Matthew Stafford's fault. But anyhow, my what what's funny is my third point actually is in agreement with what you said, and that is this. We've seen what the Cincinnati Bengals can do in terms of halftime adjustments to probably the best offense in the NFL. So I think for the Rams, I don't care how the first half went. If you go up 27 to 0, 30 to 3, do not have the same game plan when you come out of halftime. Already have that second game plan ready to go. Hell, the Super Bowl schedule does it for you. First week, where you don't have any of the media stuff, which was last week, come up with the first half game plan. Second week, this week, come up with the second half game plan. Super Bowl, use both of them. Do not go in there in the second half with that exact same game plan on either side of the ball that you have because I don't know what it is about Cincinnati, but they diagnose it, they figure it out, and they clamp you in ways you never saw coming. So please, Rams, please, Sean McVay, as creative as you are, you're supposed to be the genius, the wonder boy, have a second game plan ready to go after that 50-minute halftime. Yeah, we got like 10, that, 10 performers. Yeah, that, that, that defensive coordinator said Lou uh, and Arumo, he's pretty uh-huh. freaking fantastic, obviously. So that's something to make sure like you nail on the head. You go out there and do good in the first half. You better have a whole news game plan like that, which I think McVeigh mm-hmm. will be prepared for that. That's the good thing. He's he. You can tell he's pretty prepared when it comes to that. Stuff. So-